Evidence that bears on questions of any complexity typically involves multiple forms of discourse. In modern scientific research, for example, about 25% of published materials are graphs, tables, diagrams, images. The other 75% are words. The spirit of real science and publication is whatever it takes to explain something. And here's the big point. Evidence is evidence whether words, numbers, images, diagrams, still, or moving. The information doesn't care what it is. The content doesn't care what it is. It is all information. And for readers and viewers, the intellectual tasks remain constant, regardless of the particular mode of evidence, to understand and to reason about the materials at hand and to appraise their quality, relevance, and integrity. It may be that as IT people or as designers, we care a lot, a lot about the mode of production, but we shouldn't deny ourselves the uses of every possible mode, and we shouldn't segregate the, modes of, segregate the information by the modes of production. Because the user, what the user has to reason about, it doesn't matter, it's all content. That truly, then, is content-oriented design. Matthew Parra, some 750 years ago, was constrained to produce this conspicuously squarish map of Britain. A note on the map, which was drawn around 1250, explains the distortion. The whole island should have been longer if only the page had permitted. <laughs> it, so it sounds like a web designer, doesn't it? <laughs> Something that the great John Tukey once said, uh, um, a, a bit demagogically, but at its heart uh, true, which is that we want to be approximately right rather than exactly wrong. But we would rather have people, the, the viewers, um, the users. That's a strange word, users. There are only two industries. Um, <laughs> that describe their customers as users, OK? Uh, illegal drugs and the computer industry. Uh, in, in Unix, for a while, they call them losers. It gives you an idea of the friendly spirit of that language. I'm afraid that a lot of my colleagues in the academic world, uh, instead of um, when they study, say, say financial data, uh, they approach the question like this. Um, um, how might multimedia be used to explain financial data? Uh, or um, uh, how might video be, uh, uh, be used to explain a particular set of financial data? See, that's beginning uh, with, with a, um, it's pre-specifying the, both the display method and often the data set. Uh, but to do good work, uh, you, you, your attitude should be whatever it takes that you don't pre-specify the particular types of data. You learn as you're analyzing what you need, and you don't pre-specify one mode of display in advance. You, use, you do whatever it takes. We at least want to be in the business of where, where content uh, matters. It's not just somebody positioning or showing they can read aloud from bullet points uh, that, that content matters. I think a, a really very uh, favorable advance for for data reasoning and getting more into the data is the touch, touch things. Uh, that it gets some physicality back. And after you've used the touch screen for a while, you see how kind of alienated the mouse is. And it's, I know when I go on the road and if I don't take my laptop uh, and I just have my iPhone and I come home and I have really nice screens and I start clawing at them to make them, <laughs> make them do things. I, I, I suppose I should say a little something about PowerPoint. Uh, it sucks. <laughs>